Okay, intermediate accounting two, the final uh, chapter we need to talk about, chapter 21, the statement of cash flows revisited. Um, so there'll be at least three videos for this chapter. Um, I'm gonna do an intro video, and then I'm gonna talk about the direct method um, for statement of cash flows and the indirect method for reporting statement of cash flows. So this is the introduction video. So um, we'll start in on, on page uh, 1206. The statement of cash flows is all about exactly what it sounds like, what's happening with actual cash. Um, because we do everything with the accrual method, this statement is effectively, I don't want to say reversing, but kind of showing um, all the areas that accruals can kind of hide. Um, this, is, this is a breakdown of just what's happening with cash. So whenever you're looking at anything in this chapter, you know, the question you need to ask yourself is what happened to actual cash? Um, I'm not caring about whether liability, you know, itself went up or down, except for if liability goes down, what does that mean? Well, I usually pay this with cash, right? Um, if an asset gets purchased, um, I'm not worried about the accumulated depreciation very much because it's a non-cash, uh, but I am worried about did I pay cash for it now? Or did cash go out? Um, so cash inflows and outflows. Cash inflows would be things like cash received from revenues. I'm on, on illustration 21-1 on page 1206. Investing activities uh, would be like the sale of property, plant and equipment, uh, or intangible assets. Um, the sale of uh, securities, um, investments in securities, um, and collections of loans. Uh, financing activities would be issuance of stock, issuance of bonds and notes. So these are all things that would bring money in, would cause cash inflows. It also separates them out into their three categories, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Um, Cash outflows, the things like cash paid for expenses, but remember just cash paid for expenses, not expenses in, in, in total. Um, purchasing property, plant and equipment, and tangible assets, purchasing investments and securities and loans to others um, would be cash outflows and it would fall also under invest, investing activities. Um, financing activities, payments of cash dividends, repurchasing of stock or repayment of debt. Okay, so these are, these are just, a, this is a pretty, it's not fully comprehensive, but a fairly comprehensive list of everything that causes cash to come in, into the business and cash to leave or go out of the business, cash inflows and outflows. So we do break these in, I'm on page 207 now, we do break these in, uh, the statement, we're breaking them up into three different categories. The three categories are cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The easiest way to kind of keep these straight is cash flow from operating activities effectively kind of like restating our income statement. Okay, this is gonna to have to do with our um, revenues and expenses, okay, operating activities. Generally, most everything in the operating, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, operating activities is something that's an income statement account. Um, so what money do we receive from revenues, what money do we pay for expenses, what cash do we pay? Cash flow from investing activities, we're usually talking about investment. People, you know, we, this could be investment in stocks, like buying shares of stock but it's also investment in the business itself. So this is also my pp &E, my property plant equipment. So this is gonna be, um, you know, buying and selling securities as well as, um, as well as purchasing or selling property plant equipment. Financing activities is kind of the equity section um, of the balance sheet, uh, the cash part portion of the equity section of the balance sheet. So we're talking about issuing stocks, bonds, or again, repurchasing stocks, bonds, um, those types of things would all fall under financing. Um, so the debt and equity areas of the, of the, um, of the business of the organization. Um, so you can see on 21.2, uh, page 1208, a pretty good example um, of a uh, statement of cash flows. Um, we have our inflows and our outflows uh, from our operating activities. Um, and then we can move on to our investing activities. And then we show our financing activities. And notice these numbers are positive or negative. Uh, negatives would be cash outflows and positives would be cash inflows. Um, also then notice we subtotal each, each activity uh, category, uh, operating, investing, and financing. And what this should reconcile, it should reconcile the difference between our beginning balance in cash, cash in this case on January 1st, and our cash on December 31st. So if I've done this correctly, uh, the cash account that I have, my beginning balance and my ending balance, uh, the cash account uh, should be reconciled with whatever number I come to in total on my um, statement of cash flows. Um, next, it goes on to talk about uh, cash and cash equivalents and restricted cash. We've kind of talked about this in the past, um, but really um, 
generally speaking, we're just dealing with everything that's in, that is cash uh, in this case. So that'll be all for the intro. Next, I'm going to start on page 1210 because we're going to look at operating activities and we're going to do look at the direct method and then we're going to look at the indirect method.